We are Squawking Dead, a podcast pulverizing episodes of the Walking Dead universe. Sometimes we give you news, sometimes we make you laugh, but most times we go deep nationwide. <laughs> it's on <laughs> your side. Oh, that was a little weird. Are we sponsored by Nationwide now? <laughs> no, but we're sponsored by Phineas Coffee because they're a great coffee company. They are geared for gamers. Phineas Coffee, coffee for gamers. No, their coffee is pretty damn good. My wife likes it. I like it. It is literally top tier, top grade, no blemishes, no errors in production. And you can get your first order for 10% off if you just click the link in the description of this video or podcast episode or add the bags to your cart and use the code Squawking Dead, no spaces. Just learn how to spell Squawking Dead right and you'll be just fine because it's all your fault. That I you just don't know discovered how to spell it. the reason Not- that this podcast isn't popular is that no one can spell Squawking. It's actually not, it's actually not, it's not you guys. It's, it's just the name. It's de facto us. <laughs> if you really think because about it. Because we are squawking dead. <laughs> right. I mean, when I first discovered you guys, it took me like a month to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> the word squawking. Wow. <laughs> it's, by the way, it's not the first time I've heard that, by the way. It's like, I, I want to look for your podcast, but I was too drunk to spell squawking. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even drunk there, so I just, uh, I just, in, pure incompetence. Uh, you, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an everyone thing. Man, I didn't even know how to spell squawking when I thought of the name. I was like, oh, there's a W in this? Ooh, gross. Oh, I was missing, I was I missing mean, all the, kinds of letters. Like the U's, the W's? Yeah. It, there's an sometimes A in there? I, sometimes what? I miss the K and that really throws me off. <laughs> Wait, there's a K in squawking? I mean, I'm reading it off your t-shirt, so like I'm sure that I'm right. Yeah, this is, by the way, this is the uh, another way of supporting us. This is the... Fear the Walking Dead season seven inspired logo shirt, Dave, which you can get. At I'm wearing our merch the exact store. same t- t-shirt as you. Are you flipping? Kidding I'm not me? kidding you. I'm not taking my jumper off though. Do it. Oh, oh you can't. Okay, okay. I will. All I will. right. Well, and so you can get that at squawkingdead.com. Click the uh, the main menu at the top left and choose merch, like Jasmine and Dave, and we're wearing the same shirt. Is that so? Oh, that's so crazy. I'm wearing the eco-friendly shirt. I think I forget which one I'm wearing, and she's wearing the comfy. Uh, it's the um, charcoal. The earth, the earth background one. I think so. <laughs> She's wearing the earth killing shirt. I'm wearing the eco friendly shirt. <laughs> Half the shirts made out of plastic, recycled plastic, <laughs> therefore reducing your petroleum production by fifty percent. Hey, what the fuck am I talking about? Just I don't know. Buy stuff. Help support. Help us. We need your help. <laughs> Also, like, share our videos, like, subscribe, all the stuff, because honestly, I'm going to be real with you right now, for doing this for as long as we have, as good as we fucking are, and we are the best Walking Dead podcast on this fucking green earth, turning brown, whatever, we should have bigger numbers it's than we name. are. And it's it's all your fault. It's not our fault. It is our fault. Yikes. It's your fault. You you're, You need to share our stuff. It's your fault. It's all your fault. It's not the name. It's yours. It's just, and I'm going to like neg my audience into not doing anything. No, you're it's negging your... them into doing it. So as I was saying in the pre-show, I was thinking to myself, I'm getting to the point where like last episode, I, I expressed a little bit of frustration over the Lance character and how that was developing. And that was me just being annoyed with having to kind of square so many different circles and trying to like, oh, I kind of like this character, but like he's doing things that I don't, uh, I don't really, I don't feel comfortable with. But more to the point. This episode is even worse on that scale of things because the impression I got of him from the start is wildly diverging from the Lance that we're seeing by the end of this episode. And the problem I have with that is, and this is my fingers crossed hope for this character, is that all the stuff that we got to see in the beginning somehow factors in. Because I'm going to say... As a result of getting a ton of buildup for the Leah character, th- that she kind of goes out in a whimper, in my opinion, makes me worried about the development for the Lance character as well. It's now, so before we go any further, I'm seeing faces, I'm seeing reactions. Does anybody feel somewhat the same way on that same parallel? You can start first, Charity. Oh, it's I, your I, face I'm, that's giving me the most I am, vibes. I'm not, I, I, okay. I can't even think about the parallel between the Lance character because I am so furious with how they dealt with Leah in in this episode. (sighs) Why all of the buildup of her character and her 
relationship with Daryl and what it meant and how it was affecting the story. And then he just comes in and shoots her in the back of the head and then is like, okay, bye, I'm leaving, peace out. Morales I'm much? So, yeah, but he did. He wasn't fucking Morales, okay? I know, <laughs> It's a totally, I know, I know. But that's, that's totally what makes it different relationship yeah. status. I feel like they did to Daryl's character what they did to Jon Snow in fucking Game of Thrones. When they had him kill Daenerys, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't fucking seen Game of Thrones, sorry. The way he killed Daenerys, I love you, my queen, and then while he's kissing her, stabs her in the fucking gut. That would have been way better, at least, actually. At least he looked opinion. at her. But to me, it felt like it felt like a character assassination of his character that was totally out of character for something Jon Snow would do. And that's how I feel about Daryl when it comes to Leah. I feel like that was totally out of character for him to just come in and shoot her in the back of the head and then leave like she didn't matter at all. So, I mean, that's that's part of my gripe. The other gripe is that they built up her character and then just demolished her for no reason. She had so much potential. How many things they could have done with her? She could have teamed up with Lance. She could have joined the CRM. I mean, anything. Can you imagine her with fucking Jadis? Ugh. I- I'm just furious that they Wait, took who this says awesome she's character dead? and Tis but a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I, have, was I have something to say about this one okay we don't know what daryl and morales's relationship was prior to what we saw. <laughs> everybody everybody okay. so your slander on morales played by wanji Pere- pereja pereira i don't know man <laughs> raw is just, so so offensive anyway go ahead Sorry. Just something for you to think about that's all <laughs> yeah for all of you every and also it's your fault we're not the best <laughs> walking dead podcast <laughs> on the internet all of you are guilty anyways i felt like it was a lot of build up for nothing i i agree with sharing these thoughts and does that make me sad about it it not really interesting <laughs> just, interesting I okay i mean like i'm sad that I feel like it was time wasted in the last season, but mm. am I sad over the situation that happened? Not really, because I I knew it was coming. I wish it had gone a different way. Uh, it could have been. Oh, more I knew she was. But I knew it, she was. It dead. is what it is. That's not why I'm upset. I knew. I mean, I knew they were going to kill her off. Like whatever. Yeah. I'm upset how they did it, and I, I'm just. I mean, I oh, feel yeah. like they could have yeah. used her in other ways. That was. I mean, for one thing, she was fighting Maggie. They're not going to kill Maggie off. They just announced the spinoff with her. Even though, yeah. even though I was legitimately yelling, kill her, kill her. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> you can't will it kill into her. existence. <laughs> but, by the way, as, as we as we play uh, Linda Peck Athens, who was fan art Lindy, ko-fi.com fan art Lindy, who was also a Survivor tier member, who Aiden, who was a Whisperers tier member and a core member of the show, stole away because she was supposed to host on this show. Everybody's screwing Squawking Dead today, especially people from the inside. For me, like... I enjoyed the Reaper's storyline at the time, but like it doesn't have much rewatch value to me. And now that I know the conclusion of like Leah's story, I just think like I look back on the Reaper's storyline and I'm just like, what's the point? She was the only Reaper that we actually had like a connection to and a big story with. Mm. And then just to kill her like that, it just really ruins her character for me. So here's Dave's attempt <laughs> attempt at trying to see what they were trying to do, which is something we often try to do. <sighs> the problem is that Telepathy isn't a thing that exists. Let me explain. One of the things that Leah happens to finally say, and this is the only thing I kind of noticed on second watch, was Maggie is basically trying to compare her suffering to Leah's suffering. I don't know if it's as a means to not kill her or to kill her or to sacrifice her, because I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, we can go back to this point, maybe. When she's talking to Herschel, she has committed herself to being the only one that gets killed. That's something we can go back to. And she's saying goodbye to Herschel, essentially, and leaving him in the hands of, well, his his father's killer, <laughs> which is like, this is the only way you're going to get choices. But keep that in your thoughts. I know, Jasmine, I know you have to go. I'm going to say this publicly because we're going to miss you when you're gone because we like you. But hold that thought. We'll come back to it. So in her, in her attempt of making her the only one that she goes after, please kill me. Let this end with what I did to your family. She says, I'm going to go after everyone you love which is why I compared her to Clear Morgan. It was like, she wants to bury everyone and everything that may have had an even ancillary connection to Maggie, even the people who hated her, maybe Lance. Like, I could see her totally going after Lance. Like, oh, I'm, you, hey, Lance, you want to clear the field? 
I'll clear the field of anybody who's had contact with Maggie. Like anybody who even has a hateful relationship with Maggie, I'm going to take them down. So when Maggie kind of realizes this, Daryl comes in and kills her. <laughs> like the telepathy doesn't exist. Now, narratively, OK, one plus one equals two. Leah gets taken out because she needs to be taken out. I feel like what they were trying to do was establish that Leah had to be stopped because it wasn't going to end with Maggie. She was going to clear the field. The problem is that Daryl's the one that ends up killing her. So that that's a huge problem. And the fact that Daryl is the one to, to, to kill her should have presented more consternation, problems, issues like within himself. Like I feel like Daryl has developed enough as a character to actually express emotions and issues with, you know, killing the person he once loved. We may see a little bit more uh, of that in the next following episodes, meaning, OK, we're going to do this really fast now, but it's going to be one of those things that haunts him. Kind of like the way Mercer kills his men, and it kind of haunts him. So there could be a little bit of, like, retreading of steps, because they happen really, really fast in this episode, which is kind of why I was saying before that we got on and started recording, like, I don't know if I have anything to talk about, because everything happens so fast, and there's not really much to say, and things just kind of happen. Not really too many things to focus on. I feel like they've rushed everything this season. I don't really have any connection... I mean, other than our already established characters, like all the new characters, like, I don't know, they all just flow in and out and everything's so fast. And like, this is happening. And like, like they rushed this one at the end. You know, I just feel like the whole season has been, the whole mid season has been this way. So what you're saying is like the show is asking us to care about this arc. Meanwhile, we need also, a little bit more time all, to process what's happening. Yeah, in this and arc. I also feel like the way they presented it with the, the time jumping around wasn't necessary. Yeah. They could have told us a linear story without us having to sit here and be like, okay, this happened then, and that happened when, and this happened, and this was how long ago. Now it's three Why months later, now it's six months later. Why don't you just tell us this story in a linear fashion, and I think it would have worked much better. Because we're like, it's like, okay, we're going to jump ahead, mm. and this is what happened. But then we're like, wait, what, 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 and this person, and who, and what? The whole arc was not necessary. They could have told this I, whole thing in a mm. linear fashion, and it would have... I think it would have made us connect to the characters more because we're too busy trying to think about where the hell we are in the story to worry about who the people are and what's going on. Let me try to figure out why they presented it in such a way, because you have to remember, they, they inserted the six month time jump at the let's just say the end of the Reapers arc, like the multiple Reapers. But then to show that it's not all sun and roses for Maggie six months later. Like, okay, we jumped from one enemy to just a completely new enemy. And then we we have to retread and figure out how we got to this point, which happened in the last episode of 1115, uh, which was trust. So it actually kind of makes what Daryl does at the end of the episode with Leah, uh, killing her, basically shooting her in the head, actually kind of makes sense. Because there's a little weird symmetry going on here where Daryl is the one who is to put the last nail in the coffin for the Reapers, effectively Leah. I almost hate that it's her, him, though, but we'll go back to that. At the end of the day, Daryl does the thing to save his family when, oh man, it's just so weird. It's just so weird. Like I'm comparing 1109 to this episode, 1116, like what Maggie ends up doing with the Reapers, killing their, her, their, uh, Leah's family effectively. And then Daryl not hesitating from killing Leah when it comes to his family, Maggie. So what is that going to mean no, with his relationship Darryl to Maggie? Like, there's just no Darryl question, right? Daryl did not hear her say that she was going to go kill everybody. He just came in and fucking shot her. No. I mean, it. He, there was. Right. He didn't hear all that shit. He had no idea. What, well, I mean, sure, knowing her, he probably knew what she was capable of, but he didn't hear her say that. Right. He was. He just. It just. Infuri it just infuriates me. It infuriates me that that's what they did. He, she didn't even know it was him. Yeah. Like, how are you going to have this? It's supposed to be meaningful that he's the one that takes her out, but she didn't even fucking know. Where's the closure in that? Maybe there. Maybe it's not over yet. That's that's kind of like I know. I know. I'm I'm kind of like praying beyond hope that this uh, this has ripples in Daryl's persona and his feelings and his and his character because for all the time they staked in the bonus episodes and in the beginning of 11 season 11 or the first trimester to have this not have any effect is 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 going to suck that I'll take that I'll take any ill effects that Daryl's gotten out of out of having to do this I hope I hope they as, do as not a win but as a I consolation I just spent a whole lot of time talking about how um, Daryl is the real hero of the show. And he is. No, and, and had he not done that, he would. she would have definitely killed Maggie. 
She was like, she was like pummeling his, her face to death. So in some respects, I don't think that like the character of Daryl made like the wrong decision in the situation or that it would have gone down a different way of that situation. But I just want like have the like the writers to have like set it up somewhat differently so that it would be a situation where it like maybe Daryl Daryl and Leah had to get into like a you know like a hands on battle not not like a you know and like having to like actually like process that like obviously in the situation that was presented the only option was for Daryl to shoot but you know if just if the plot had been different if the episode had kind of gone a different way if it hadn't felt like a little bit rushed and a little bit Maggie focused in a way it might have been a more satisfying death and one thing that I do want to mention is that what would have really 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 satisfied me is if Leah actually revealed the reason why Pope was so thing against Maggie in the first place right. like that would have been because this right. is obviously like the closure of the Reaper arc so for me that would have given like true closure to the Reaper arc and there was a little bit a little bit of that in the dialogue back and forth with Leah that's the other saving grace that I want to bring up. I, it, what's funny about all of this is I always write this shit down in my notes, but I never use my notes. Never. Like when I'm struggling, I'll go, what? Where is the thing that I said? So in the dialogue between Leah and Maggie and even Leah and sorry, Maggie and Daryl or somebody who cares? She kind of alludes to the fact that that she was kind of making up for past mistakes. We had asked the question, why did Maggie's civilizations fall and fall and fall? Like she's so unlucky. Things, bad things are happening. One of the things I feel like we learned finally in this episode is the reason why these communities kept falling be is because she kept focusing on the place rather than the people. Like, of course she cares about the people, but like when it came to Barrington House and finally realizing Negan's like, this should hold a place. You keep trying to build it up, but it keeps falling. You keep trying to keep this place up, but you, it, you forget that this place is nothing without the people. And so... When she gets it and she goes, yeah, no, you're right, I know. And I think that's actually why the Reapers kept coming after us because we kept going back for the place or we kept trying to you know, take our place back when we could have just let them have it and let them live their lives. And maybe the rest of our wardens and all the rest of our people wouldn't have died you know, in, in vain. We could have just left well enough alone, but we kept poking the bear, the wrong kind of bear. I definitely think that that's like a possibility but it would have been nice if Leah had just kind of said something that confirmed something along them lines. I shouldn't have to say it explicitly, but it would have been nice. Yeah, I, it, it didn't have to be explicitly said, I, I don't think either, but I think Negan and her interaction kind of said yeah. everything that needed to be said, which is kind of a reflection of what Madison says before her exit on the show, officially, not officially, in, in season four, episode eight in Fear the Walking Dead, where she kind of goes, it was never about the place, it was about you two. You know, it was about uh, it was about the people. You know, no one's gone till they're gone. No one, not no place is gone till it's gone. It's no one. It's about you guys. It doesn't matter where we live. It's inside walls, outside walls. Who cares about the argument of whether a place is ever meant to survive? It's about you people. And if it means we save more of you people, kind of like the same, we can draw a par parallel between what Leah says to Lance is like, okay, collateral damage. She doesn't care about people. It's not about the people. It's about the mission. Is the mission complete? Oh, okay. Who cares how many people died? This is also something that we said about, oh yeah, the comparison about green apples to red apples. What we're talking about in The Rotten Core. Who cares if the mission is complete? If we're doing all these things, we're playing the smart play to keep most people safe, but you know, we end up killing more people to get that objective safe. Well, you're missing the heart. But if you're killing a bunch of people and not caring about the future, what the, the result's gonna be, well, then you're all about the passion. You're all about the feelings. Let's have a little bit of both. So I'm going to go now. I just want to say that, like, even though I had, like, some issues with, like, the Leah stuff, overall, I'm quite positive on this episode. I'm really liking the direction that they're taking in the Commonwealth with, like, the newspapers and stuff. And I am was mm. very, very, very hyped, like, visibly very hyped when I saw, like, the uh, banners going over the communities with Lance. I thought it was sick. Establishing Commonwealth colonies. By the way, the paper is not an official paper. Like I, yeah, yeah, you you know that, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, okay. So to make sure that was clear, okay. Little tiny things that we can give you before we go to you go to sleep. Goodbye. Be safe, Good Jasmine. Night. We'll see you soon. Good, Good night. night. So not to throw a wrench in because we lost somebody along the way, J aka Jasmine. It's been a quite a rocky recording as we've had it uh, tonight. But I do want to say one thing. A couple of years ago. Three years ago, about 
I had said something completely stupid because we had just met Lydia in Walking Dead season nine. This is post the time jump. Henry's a lot older and they're starting to have this relationship thing going on. And one of the things that Lydia does that we astutely observed in that episode that Daryl had done in many seasons prior was eat a worm. And then we everybody was calling it like worm gate and whatever and it's worms, it's gross and it wasn't a real worm anyway. You find out later. Point is, like, I made a funny thing about like, oh, you know, if we can get to a thousand followers, I'll eat a, I'll eat one worm live on Instagram mm-hmm. live. Of course, we were a nothing podcast back then. We were getting some ground, but nobody was like, OK, who cares? I did it today. Mm-hmm. And this is obviously just because just before we started podcasting today, it was like an hour beforehand. And all of a sudden, our t- squawking dead Twitter blows the fuck up. OK, yeah. everybody's like, I want to see this because I've been locked in my house for two years and I want to see some dick eat two worms. If <laughs> So the, the thing is, the challenge that was elicited was if we can get to 2000 followers, which isn't that isn't that much in the grand scheme. OK, we're at like 13 something right now, 100 followers. If we can get to 2000 before the end of uh, April, I'll eat two worms live. No problem. I issued another challenge in the thread, which was if you can get us to 10,000 before the end of April, I will eat 10 worms and fly out to the location of the 10,000th follower just to prove that I will eat 10 worms <laughs> on live and they will film <laughs> it for us. Because it's wor- if you can get us to 10,000 in under a month, okay, yeah, I will put the, my money down, make that mission happen. And eat those goddamn worms. Here is my logic. I stand by my claim. This is not a joke. I'm not making a funny. This is the best Walking Dead podcast on this planet. Mars, I don't fucking know. But this podcast deserves to be heard. So if that in some way reaches five more ears, 10,000 followers reaches five more ears that will listen to this show and get something out of it. Yeah, I'll eat. I'll eat worms. I'll eat worms in whatever country you're coming from, 10,000 follower. So I, I, I issue my challenge to you, world. Make that, hap- make that happen. I will do whatever. I added uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and said, you want to see some Joe Rogan circa 2001 shit? Fear factor. <laughs> so stuff. here's hoping. <laughs> you know, my, my podcaster dumb brain <laughs> keeps thinking to myself, oh, what if, you know, you have those like little flights of fancy. We all have these. I'm hoping. Like where, okay, have you ever watched Hot Ones with Sean Evans uh, on First We Feast? Oh, you've never, you've never watched Hot Ones where you eat the chicken wings while, while you're actually, uh, they're asking I know questions. What you're talking about, questions. Yeah. but I've Pro- never Progressively watched hotter chicken wings it. while he asks you questions or asks <laughs> the celebrity questions. Oh my God, you have to watch this. What's wrong with your life that you haven't? Mm. So my, I keep dreaming that I should be on the show. Obviously my stomach will pay the price, but it'll be worth it. Your stomach won't pay the price? Your butthole will pay the It's the whole digestive <laughs> process. It starts with the stomach, works its way down, out the butt. And then like, oh, what, what would it be like to, to, to be on Joe Rogan's podcast? I think it would be pretty cool. I thought, I'd have a lot to say, I think, <laughs> obviously. You've He'd been here. get you ripped. <laughs> oh, yeah, he would. I, I'm terrible. I'm terrible on the pot. That's which I, which is why I never had the it pot. on the pot. <laughs> That's why I said the pot. I'm actually not that. I'm not that great on it. I'm not a little. Little takes me a little too far. It's not. It's not a good look. Let's, let's get back to the Maggie Leah thing. Let's close the book on that because yes, we, I think we all felt about the same thing. I think that they were trying to give it some sort of justice. I just think that the way they put it all together just didn't quite work didn't quite work. There's no telepathy between Maggie and Daryl for Daryl to have all the baked in feelings that Maggie's experiencing in the moment, like the the, the exchange that they're having, unless all the noises were from Daryl, because you could hear like the kind of like knocking noises in the house while Maggie and Leah were conversing, which I mean, we all were thinking, okay, it's cicadas or something or what, whatever that noise is. If it was Daryl and them, then they took a hell of a long time to come in and do anything. In that little cabin, right. in that Agreed. little one room looking cabin. Yeah, I, I assumed it was like the locusts, like slamming against the walls that time. Right, right. Yeah. I did. I did notice that that Leah hesitated to kill Maggie when she could have, just like she hesitated to kill the woman in in the in the basement or whatever that Daryl ended up killing. 
Bridget, why do you think that Ma- that Leah hesitated? Because that's the one thing well, I really. It's the one thing in this podcast that I only want to talk about. Like, I mean, everything else is like ancillary. Like, I don't care, <laughs> care about it as much. So you had mentioned earlier that you felt like Maggie had gone into this whole thing thinking she was sacrificing herself and she was leaving her soul. Now I didn't think of that to that extreme. I didn't um, either. But until the, just then. <laughs> but when I was watching the second time. I noticed that she was trying to egg Leah on, Maggie was, to get her to kill her so that she could like, that that would end it. I'll do this. I'll sacrifice myself so that you leave everyone I love alone. So I'm going to egg you on. And maybe she hoped like, if you get angry, what, and isn't Michonne the one who says that thing about like, if you get angry, you get stupid, mm. if stupid gets you killed. So I felt like that was kind of where that was going and Leah hesitated because she I think she was like this is my gut reaction really quickly is I want to I want to kill her but like I I'm not supposed to because I'm supposed to like be punishing her over time but she's egging me on so then you know then the kind of lunch happened but Mm. I there is there a part of her sure that feels something towards towards women especially other mothers of course Uh, like we've seen it we've seen it already and so does she feel that that way about Maggie Maybe a little bit. I think it fights the other part of her that's so intensely mad at at what's happened to her family, the Reapers, and the promise that she was made that she was given by Maggie, who then went back on that promise immediately. Yeah. There's a little bit of hesitation because Maggie's a woman and has a child, or like There's a mother. Also, you mean? More yeah, or less? and then is it is it a woman or is it a mother? Mm, I don't know. Agatha didn't get off easy either. <laughs> I mean, she's yeah, not a mother, but. but well, and we don't, you don't know that. In the apocalypse, you don't know. Whoa, damn. Right? There's, there's a kid we didn't, that's floating around We didn't around know Michonne somewhere. was a mom until she shared that part of her life. Ooh, that's like, heavy, yo. That's heavy. You'd have to share that for someone to truly know. So then do you run into any kind of middle-aged woman and think she's maybe a mom? I probably would bank on the fact that they didn't have kids in this broken universe. <laughs> it's hard to get it up. <laughs> I would think. We've talked about this. On that subject, do you think that Leah felt also anger and sadness because she lost Daryl? Yeah. Well, I felt like that's kind of what she was saying when she was telling Maggie. She's like, doesn't she say like it's that, but it's also something else? That made me think she was, not that she was referring to Pope and her family, but to me that felt like she was referring to Daryl. Like, I lost him in all of this. And we finally found each other again, which I never, I never thought he was going to come look for me. And then by some miracle, he ends up where I am. And where is she right now? And then it all right falls now? to pizzas. Is she in, the, in, the, in their cabin, in the Find Me cabin? I, I thought so. That was where I thought they were. I thought so, too. Mm-hmm. Which is the only reason why Daryl found her. I mean, essentially, right? Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit more. So I, I, I even hate talking about because I do like her. I do like her as a character. I'm sad that she's gone. I'm sad that all that buildup kind of just felt like it was It kind of, I'm going to say it. Kind of felt like it was for nothing. It was underwhelming, like Alden was underwhelming. Just like this was what the buildup was for. Uh, so I felt that way after the first watch. And then my second watch, all I could think about was, what are they going to do when the show comes back? Like, what are these last episodes going to look like? And so I rationalized it in my head there. Like, I just, I, I mean, I hope they're just going to be real bangers, like one right after the other. But I, I kind of went to that thought. Like, I was like, okay, well... Okay, so I'm not seeing like a real response right now. There's no processing happening. Like everybody's just walking. That's it. That's the end of the that's the end of this episode. But I I was like, well, this has to lead to something. There's going to be something. Am I just like naive and hopeful? Again, I'm going to draw the Game of Thrones parallel. Everybody thought the last season of Game of Thrones was going to be a banger and it was you know, too underwhelming to say the least. So, is in some a show, respects it was it, it, as great a show, but as not this in every is, respect. <laughs> let's hope they not. Well, I mean, I I liked everything except the last episode. You know, I mean, I I liked most oh, of season six. That's except, what I was thinking except actually. For the yes. last episode, but still, I was, was even okay with the last episode to be honest with you. Uh, but but I but of course I see what everybody means. Yeah. I do. I do. I'm not I'm not blind. I have eyes, <laughs> like and ears too. Hopefully they do it, but. I would take Daryl's confusion and like his mixed upness as a consolation prize for sure. Because to to kind of marry what you just said about what does the rest of this goddamn final season going to look like, I'm going to say right off the bat, I feel like what they're going to do is fast forward 
to what the next, what I don't know, three months, maybe three months later, they want to bury this as fast as possible so that we, so that we can pick it up along the way. Like what, okay, so what happened after this, this Milton paper went out? What happened after Oceanside seems to have been captured by Lance and he flips a coin to decide their fate? Probably, who knows, which would be terrifying. I don't know. Or maybe the, maybe it's not as bad as we think it is. Uh, and then Daryl, what happens to Daryl as a result of killing the only person that we know of or, you know, that is canon that he has loved? What, what effect has that had on him as a parent, as a person in the world, as a defender of the Commonwealth originally? Is he able to go back to the Commonwealth? What does his journey look like? I would like to see that. In, I want to be like, I want it to be pornographically torturous. No, I'm kidding. I want it to be exploratory. This character deserves more. Across this series, he has been the one character whom we have put on what we assume who this person is. He does little and we put on him, we attribute to him a lot of what we think is this character. He doesn't show a lot of his own personality. He kind of just shows in his actions and we kind of layer on what that means. Usually he is whatever we think he is. Like, meanwhile, he could be, you know, he does nice things. He does great things. He's a hero. He's, he's a good guy. He does it in his actions. He doesn't brag about it. He doesn't do this, doesn't do that. He's kind of gross in some spots, whatever. But then eventually, right? Like, what the hell's this shit about? Licking your fingers and wiping it on milk. What, what is his face, his shirt? I forget his name. Patrick. What is that shit? Right. Yeah, right. Patrick. Like, okay. There's no way to treat somebody. It's very rude. Anyway, so my point being, like, until, like, around season nine, in my opinion, like you get suffering, you get this and that, but you don't really know what he's thinking. You don't really know what he's feeling. Around season nine, you start to get like he's being verbal about his desires. Like, oh, I liked better when we were just a few of us, blah, 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 blah. And then like, you don't hear anything. And it's like, I was trying to tell you, Rick, and you were listening. But then like you get to this season. Oh, I'm a father. I have kids. I love these kids. Whatever. Don't don't touch my kids. You know, like that that kind of like, okay, I am stating clearly what I think and who where I want to be. Commonwealth is great. So I want something more exploratory here. I want something, I want to pay off here. I want a little bit more on what he's feeling about having to kill the only person he's ever loved. I want that. I do too. That's what I'm hoping. I mean, I really do. I want I want him to have some kind of reaction to it. Otherwise, I'm just tortured. I'm just furious about it. Like Right, because it makes it makes the Leah arc bad, but it but it also makes the whole Reaper arc bad. Mm -hmm. Like useless, right? Useless. As a result. Well, and it undoes it undoes Daryl's growth. I'm not it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be this big piece of exposition where he laments his choice or whatever. It could be no, as no. subtle as when after Beth died, when they showed that scene where they're on the road and he finds that um, barn, you know, mm -hmm. before the big storm and he goes off to the side and he just sits and starts to cry. Like mm -hmm. it could be as simple as that, because that's how Daryl has always been, even though he's grown and he's been able to share a little bit more with the people that he's really close with. Even if it was just that, I would feel better, you know, than, than just having it hanging. I wonder if this <sighs> will create a divide between Daryl and Maggie. If Daryl's going to see it as he had to kill Leah to save Maggie, and he's going to resent her on some level for that. Wow, I hope not. I, I, I'll say why, because it feels unfair, doesn't it? Like, considering what he did to Glenn. I mean, did quote-unquote, quote-unquote, I don't think he did, did it, but he did it. But, like, you could interpret it. I mean, I'm sure he does. And even though they had their, their makeup point two times about Glenn and all that, the 10C bonus episodes, whatever. But that would be something, wouldn't it? I was actually thinking something else. I was thinking, what if this is the moment where Daryl goes off with Carol in whatever series? Like, and then they they don't, they in the rear view, they go, oh yeah, he went away. He couldn't stay. There's two factors that play into this. One, what does the world look like with Lance clearing the field, quote unquote? Pamela losing her influence. Does Lance take over? The second part of that is, can Daryl come back to the Commonwealth after what they tried to do with him? That's a hard question to answer, right? What does that look like? So no. then what other choice does he have but <laughs> no, to go off to the spinoff? The same fate lies with uh, Carol, too. Because what need does Lance have to do with Carol after, first of all, Carol served her purpose <laughs> and ratted out <laughs> Sebastian? <laughs> but also, like, if he can move in the open and is taking over, what need does he have of Carol? 
He can. He doesn't have to operate well, in the shadows. And anymore. after the whole brouhaha involving all of her friends, I'm not sure he's going to be inclined to trust her with anything anyway. I mean, if he's the one that's responsible for Daryl and Maggie, I mean, Maggie was never there, but for Daryl and Aaron and Gabriel to be um, exiled wherever the hell they're going to end up, he could be like, well, I don't really think I need Carol around here anymore. I mean, well, so when Lance comes back to the Commonwealth, everything's going to happen really, really, really quickly, right? Because he's going to come back and he's going to be like, okay, this whole group has got to go because they turned on me. And so they're either going to have to get out immediately or they're going to be like imprisoned in some way. Yeah, because they have all the colonies, Mm -hmm. the Commonwealth colonies, which Alexandria, Hilltop and Oceanside. Carol has the heads up of knowing that Lance was involved in all of that stuff with the money. Mm -hmm. And so now she's at a point to be like, I don't trust this guy. Knowing Carol, she's got an escape route and a backup plan. Yeah, but now I'm wondering what that could be even. Or what that looks like. I don't know. Right, right. I don't know. But do we all agree that Daryl has nowhere to go except for the spinoff at this point? That or, and I, I hate to say this. This like kills me inside to say that. Like, I don't like saying this, but I've said what I've said about how I feel like one of these spinoffs may not be real because of how Kirkman ended the comic books. And I would hate it to happen. But what if Daryl dies? And that's the end. <sighs> right? I thought like, that too. what if that was... I hate it. I hate it. I I cannot describe a- how much saying, I Tyler hate it. Tyler would be thrilled. Yeah. At Tyler Phillips Cox. T- Tyler so, would yeah. be thrilled. At, at as him. A- our, our whispers here, remember? As much as I hate that whole concept, like I could see them doing that because it would be such a shocking big moment. And if that's what they're in for, like we want this big shock. We're lying about what we're doing and we're going to pull a fast one on you. He's beloved. People are obsessed. Like, I I love Daryl. I'm not at, like, the level of, like, writing creepy fan fiction about me and him. But uh, <laughs> but, but if you're going to do something like this, why not, like, near the end? Like, we're, you know, fuck it. Okay, we're, we're this far yeah. in. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares, Bridget? So, it breaks my heart. But that is, a, it's a theory that is floating around in my head. Like, oh, Nathan says, like, biting at a convention? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. not. I'm not that at that level. I did say I don't want to ever meet him because I feel like I'll pass out in front of him. And why pay all that money to pass out in front of someone? But that's my only reaction to meeting him. I feel like. Right. If anything, this this move or what happens here in this episode lends more credence to the fact that he may just go off to the spinoff right away. Sight unseen. I don't think we'll ever see or hear from him again. His on version the series. of getting sent north of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although we did see whatever. Yeah. We did see them later. So, but we're here. This is it. This is, this is we're not going to see him ever again. What does that look like? What does that make the show look like? And I could see stupid people going, oh, I'm not watching the show anymore because me. I'm sorry. He's going to work at a cinema and it just got Aiden me. says, <laughs> what is it, Daniel Salazar? Gene Tax. That could be a possibility. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at that though, by the way. I wouldn't be mad at him leaving the show suddenly because of that. And then people mentioning in retrospect, uh, he just, there's, there's nowhere for him to go. Yeah. I mean, Dar- Daryl is not the reason why I watch the show. If that like means that. that there's going to be a spinoff, then I would be happy. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Be like, oh, and then you get excited for that. And you'd be like, oh, oh, oh he gets a, a clear runway for his own show. All Daryl, all the time. I'm kidding. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all Daryl, all the time. <laughs> not these. The, that's the only reason why I watch The Walking Dead. I want to watch more Daryl. Like this, I, I'll watch it. I'll watch. It. I cared about him at one point. I don't know, my Mike, if he actually has more lines, I mean, I'd be, I'd be in for. It. So, uh. <laughs> sorry, I'm done. That's I'm all done. He needs. That's all he needs. It's all he needs. More Daryl looking sounds. <laughs> one of the guys that they were fighting was name was Romano, and I just thought that was really funny because wasn't Romano in the World Beyond? <laughs> yeah, L- Will's partner in World Beyond yeah. was named Romano. Yeah, a- in. He was originally from Campus Colony. Hey, maybe uh, maybe Romano has a cousin. Maybe or Romano brother, didn't even. die, and um, he actually didn't die in the world beyond, and he made his way through the comedy. Nah, he's a different looking guy. We actually got to see Romano in season two, oh, so well. a totally different close, guy. Close enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, those Italians are all like, "What, Charity? <laughs> what?" Uh, also, <laughs> cancel um, squawking, Dad. What? <laughs> I I love that these people can hit. A walker in the dark in the head from like five miles away. 
but they cannot hit each other in a parking lot across a few cars. <laughs> well, a soldiers wearing bright white uniforms with stripes covering, uh, pointing out the vital. I gotta areas. say, we 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 talked about this um, when Rick was having trouble hitting Negan <laughs> in season eight, uh, episode. 10 11 something like that he's going after him in the charger and negan goes into the house and he's like you can't hit me rick anyway whatever and we i actually broke this down i actually said yeah it's hard to hit a moving target that is a human <laughs> i mean i, I the cop I, the success rate with cops is terrible like, <laughs> i i know i know it is but it's just funny yeah. that they could hit walkers dead in the head from 500 yards but they can't hit people across a car parked car to be fair i mean they didn't kill anybody but because their plot armor protects them but <laughs> both, they wore it both aaron and gabe were like hit, hit. yeah they were hit and, and those sequences were pretty pretty cool like the squibs oh, yeah hitting it the was bus. exciting yeah. daryl had having to duck even Wait, more yeah. and more i'm so sorry because this is getting us off track but did you see the insert of the snake yeah okay what was that about Okay. Is that the so, Orovipra? Here's no, here's my theory the, the on gold it. Gold Viper. Here's my theory on it. This is one of the things I was excited about. Panned over to the snake really quickly while they're in that shooting scene, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> is and the then snake, Gabriel comes out with a knife. Is the snake gonna bite someone? Like I was thinking, like, is it poisonous? Like we're in the south, there's a lot of poisonous mm -hmm. snakes. No, we're not in the south anymore. Well, still kind of. But I thought it was meant to be like imagery for Gabe. The snake was propped up, you know, and then all of a sudden he comes out from down below and stabs that guy in the leg like a strike. Cobra strike? Is that what yes. you're trying to say? Cobra strike. But not cobra like a snake? cobra, but just like any, any snake, okay? Any snake will do. Snake strike, <laughs> python I, strike, cobra I felt strike. Like it was, I felt like it was interesting imagery because if it's meant to be imagery for Gabe, the mm -hmm. snake is so often tied in with the devil. Right. So, so what it was very interesting to me. Well, I mean, let's keep, let's keep going down that path. You're right. It was kind of a weird placement, mm -hmm. right? Like you see this like, oh, what's is it? The snake going to bite a Commonwealth soldier? No, it was just there. What? What the what is that for then? This whole app. OK, can we can we real talk? Can we come in a little closer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come closer to the camera because I want to feel like I'm talking like to, to my friends on the side here, even though all of you can hear me. Something was something was off. This episode felt off. I'm not. This is like the first time I'm giving you the real talk. Just everything, almost everything, felt off this episode. Do we? Do we? Do we agree with that? I'd be interested to see what with like an, un, an unedited version of this would be, or like a director's cut of this would have been. I think what happens in this episode, I'm fine with. Like, look on paper, sounds great action sequence that like the one we were just talking about except for the randomly placed snake which to me i it was done so ham fistedly do snakes eat cicadas or locusts because i kind of see the commonwealth as the locust they descend on everything and then they devour it just like they descended on alexandria and hilltop and and devoured them right or oh. or devoured our group in general brought them into themselves right so maybe the snake is our group and it's our group because that's the scene where our group takes out the Commonwealth soldiers. I really like that, that uh, parallel to the Commonwealth. I teach the Bible sometimes to people with my job. So I looked into which plague number it was because I was curious as to which number the locusts were. Some Old Testament shit. Yeah, it was the eighth plague. During that sequence of events, the Pharaoh is saying the Israelites cannot leave. It's almost Passover too, by the way, which is kind of great. Yes. They're my slaves. I'm keeping them and you cannot take them with. And so, you know, Moses would go to him and say, let my people go. And the Pharaoh would say no. And it happened over and over again. Every time he said no, a different plague hit. And so I saw that parallel of like, our people need to get away from the Commonwealth and they're not being allowed to because there's so much biblical stuff in this episode with the the locust and the snake and the it's called an act of God. And, you know, so it's like there's this whole biblical thing going on. Negan mentions God like in it. So I kind of I saw that parallel, but I like the parallel of the Commonwealth being compared to the locust, too. I think that's really cool. So there's several different routes that you can go that kind of all end up, you know, with the same thing that 
because locusts come in and destroy everything. You're right. They eat up all your livestock and uh, not your livestock, your um, crops, your crops. And then you've yeah, got nothing. Crops, right. You've got nothing. Yeah. So just to answer your question from earlier, cicada, copperhead snakes in particular eat cicadas. They love them. Mm. It's one of their favorite meals, too, as I'm reading the Baltimore Sun, Maryland. So we're obviously in the right place. And there was a, bro oh yeah, wow, the Brood X that emerged about 17 years ago, which prompted the movement to eat more cicadas, for humans to eat more cicadas. Mm -hmm. God love us for being so, like, remember we talked about that a little while ago? Yeah. I was so annoyed by this. In the unedited episode, for those of you who should watch that goddamn, because I say stupid things that never make the cut. <laughs> that you should definitely listen to to cancel me. I can easily see what you're saying makes sense about our team basically, oh, we live on this. This is our bread and butter. The, Commonals, even, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? They even say clear the field, which is exactly what locusts do, is clear the field. And then we cleared them. Mm -hmm. The snakes. <laughs> <Essentially. laughs> yeah. I mean, there's also like hints of like the wine, why I said Uru, Uru Vipra was, it was one of the wines on the list of wines that... I was going to say Melissa McBride, Carol Pelletier picks up in the, the wine shop where she gets the wine for, for Lance. And uh, Chateau de Duvemont is the one she actually ends up, the Devumont is the one she actually gives to Lance. But one of them is that Gold Viper wine. And so there's that imagery. There's also the biblical imagery that Gabriel is always conjuring up and mm -hmm. who the snake and who's the snake in the grass? Uh, who knows? But the, yeah, the, obviously the conflict of, was it the, the Garden of Eden, the snake, the... The apple again, which we talked about a little for a little bit while in the last episode. I can't remember. And what was the context of that, though? Why did we bring that up? Do it you remember? Came, it was the red versus green. Thing oh, again. the apple again. The rotten mm -hmm. core. Right. Interesting. OK, fine. But again, going back to my original point, it was just like it's like throw it in there. And the snake didn't do anything. It was just on the screen, which. OK, but why did why did they need us to fill in the gap? But guys, I'm, I'm back to talking to you as my friend. They put it in there just for they put it in there just for us to see if we figure it out. Guys, I mean, look, Angela Kang, Alyssa, I appreciate you giving us our jobs back. She's I, trying to she's trying to reach out to you, Dave, to see if you can solve her ciphers and then you can be with her. To two to seasons see. of two re two seasons of complaining, and now she's like, oh, okay, oh, you want to break down it? Oh, you you want to do the inside of the episode, David, of Squawking Dead? Here you go. <laughs> Give me something to work with over here. <laughs> Angela, you now you're just mocking. Now you're just mo you're just doing this for us. You're just making this episode suck. I'll say it <laughs> for us, right? Is that what it is? It's not about your audience. It's just oh, how can I give Dave the most oh, angst and goodness. and what is it called? Like a, a conniption fit over this episode. A conniption. <laughs> okay, but, but before we move on from from Maggie, please God, when she's in the woods at night and the walker is coming at her. And she waits until it gets right up to her face before she stabs it and quietly lays it down. You know what I was thinking. <laughs> you gotta lay him down quiet. <laughs> gotta lay him down quiet. <laughs> Can't let the boys hit the floor. <laughs> Rachel was making fun oh of. Oh my god, it was so funny. How was it? How. It Who was, was saying this? It was, um, Iris was killing the walkers, and Felix is like, you gotta lay him down quiet. But, <laughs> so but he's like, you gotta lay him down quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do remember that, watching it and being like, why is he, but he, you're loud, though. Let him see him yelling. <laughs> But and then, to, and then okay, he drops so that, the walker on the ground. He just drops it on the ground. You gotta drop it down quiet. <laughs> they throws it on the ground and then it actually bounces. <laughs> and it was fall because you hear all the dried leaves. Anyway, so <laughs> it's the first thing I thought of when she did that. It made me laugh. More. <laughs> Honestly, I was too. I, one of the few things that I actually liked in this episode. Like, I hate everything. I hate that Marco dies in this episode. But and you even had, that felt you had to know that the was dramatic coming. pause. As, as soon as he well, he had a lot of lines lately. <laughs> <laughs> that is like somebody we cared. About, we're starting to care about again away oh, from us. Aid says Stevie Wonder saw that one coming. Dave, so. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I don't like what you just said. Okay. Mm. Again, and before we totally move away from from Maggie. Right. So we'll be done. with No, her. I don't let's, want to. Let's talk about Maggie and Negan and Herschel. Did you see when they came out of the hole at the end? And he was helping Herschel out, and Herschel just 
like shoved his hand away. No, I this is not the aftermath scenes, and right? Then, right, and then he goes and he's standing by by Annie. He's standing next to Herschel. Is standing next to Annie, looking at Negan with like the death stare, hate eyes, as hard. I as I saw he that can. Annie like is like nuzzled up to him, like yeah. has her like she's kind of hugging him. him. Like go go back and watch it when he helps Herschel out of the pit. He's got his hand, and when he gets out, Herschel just throw, shows it away. And then the next well, cut yeah, is by Annie. Charity. And Annie He's not is, a baby anymore. I mean, he is he staring. He doesn't need Negan, piggy pig. Oh, my God. He's staring Negan <laughs> down with the hate death ray eyes. It is insane. I can't believe y'all did. I can't believe you didn't catch it, Dave. Honestly, because both times I'm getting notes. Both times I'm shocked at how this episode ended up. Now, I, I'm not saying this was a bad episode. I just feel like I feel strange. I feel like, A, there's not much to talk about because, B... They stole, they, it's like they sucker punched me. I'm mm. struggling to say things and all I feel like I'm not talking about anything, really, honestly. I didn't even think about the whole ready to die thing for Maggie, just to kind of keep Leo away until we were talking about it. But other than that, I didn't see any of that. I didn't see any of that at all. I caught it on the second watch. I was like, ooh. Oh, I, like ooh. I like it. I like it. I like it. I want to see it. Oh, I'm here for that. I'm here for that. That makes that makes that's <laughs> redeeming. That's a little bit more redeeming. We're thank you for mentioning. Oh, we're we're tallying up all the things that make this episode redeeming. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm enjoying that. Okay, one more thing then. <laughs> Whoever yes, would have thought that Eugene would be getting more action than Daryl? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Should I say? Should I say it? <laughs> say it. Should I say it? Okay. He can first edit off, it. <laughs> first off, Eugene is the pussy crusher. <laughs> He, he banged not one, but two girls named Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we say this? Who did we say this about? And I was just like, why don't we talk about this more? Father oh. Gabriel. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, Father, the two most hated people at first characters in the Walking Dead universe, probably, Gabriel and Aaron, and they crushed the most pussy in the series. I mean, Rosita is obviously on top. Gabriel with, with and No Eugene. apologies. But Aaron. Rosita was never hated. The, Rosita was never hated. That's the thing. Yeah. Only by women who are like, she's just like a slut. All these <laughs> men. I'm like, I'm out here. This guy's the feminist. He's like, bitch, why you be slut shaming? All y'alls. And so like, okay, we move on to Gabriel and Aaron. Gabriel and, sorry, Gabriel Eugene. and Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot part of, part of the statement. Yes. I was... You, Eugene talking so a, that you'd remember is a pussy crusher but he's also a dick biter <laughs> never forget R rip sorry aiden sorry rip. i left it out dwight's left testicle rip <laughs> lefty you all right rip down lefty. there <laughs> yeah <laughs> aiden why did you say speaking of that pit elijah better stay away from lydia why is that uh go ahead Go ahead, Hayden. Oh, because oh. she's mine. He claimed her. <laughs> what are you? What are you? Joe the claimer, or Silas's grandfather? Sorry, it's an inside joke. All right, we'll leave it there. But you're not enjoying the whole Elijah. We interviewed OKMA OK, Aquari, which I still haven't released, but I will eventually once I release this episode. He was and very he seems, sweet. He's very sweet guy. Bridget was the one who did it, who interviewed him, who did it with him. I thought my heart was going to explode out of my chest. <laughs> <laughs> they all went to Disney World. They okay, did. can we talk about this? I'm going to show the so picture. Sweet. I love it. I love it. I'm going to show this one particular p picture in the edited episode. But what you didn't see, or maybe you didn't notice, was like, and I, I commented about this. So you might actually see this. Uh, Cooper Andrews is looking good. He's like losing weight. He's perfect as is. Doesn't need to lose anything. He is very handsome. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no doubt. But I always like, you know, I mean, listen, years on the show and now you're starting to see like body changes. And it's like, I think it's something to celebrate. I think it's I think it's good. No, and he, he can. And he's looking yeah. even better. Like, I didn't think like sometimes when you see somebody like lose weight and you're like, ooh, I never thought of you this way before. But now I'm kind of like I can get behind in front of oh. behind on the side of him. I've always like the second Jerry was introduced as a character, I was like. I, lo I love that. I love that guy. I love, I love that guy so <laughs> No, no. Much. 100%, but like on a sexual level. Like, I'm not saying yeah, for no. me personally. He can I, get it. Like, <laughs> just, like. I, I never saw him as like, as that kind of, until these photos. I'm like, dang, he 
He's a good looking guy. He um, is. He is. But like, and also whatever. just like leveled you up, just you know, have like a banner over this and be like, Dave's thirst moment of the week. <laughs> right. Dave, Dave's thirst moment of episode 186. Jerry Cooper Andrews. Did you notice Eugene's shirt that he was wearing in, in the bed? The triangle? Yes, yes, yes the I triangle looked it, shirt. I looked it up, and the names on the shirt are... Um, Jeffrey? Uh, Jeffrey, Frederick, and Eugene. Yep. <laughs> Of the triangles? Yeah, it yeah, says, it's name, it says the, name triangles. the triangles. And so the, it, it, there's pictures of triangles and the ki- it's a kid. It's a ki- joke about kids. And they wrote name. It says to name the triangles. So they wrote jo- uh, Jeffrey, Frederick, and Eugene. Name mm-hmm. the three triangles. Instead of like isosceles. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. But the last name on the shirt was Eugene. <laughs> Cute. Okay, Squawking Dead fans. Lance Hornsby is Wow such a good villain the subtle kind of villain that um i tend to like i don't like people over the top are like yeah they're super cool in the beginning but then you're just like whatever you're just stupid i am anyway and some say negan was over the top in the beginning but i don't feel that way about him because he had some over the top moments but then he had the personality and charm that kind of added to his Mystique, and then you could tell he was a good guy, kind of like when Brian, the governor, was Brian for a little bit, and I was really rooting for him to, like, turn over a new leaf, because it showed that he did have some humanity left in him. I haven't seen that in Lance yet, but Lance with the coin flipping thing is reminding me of two other characters in the world. Uh, Harvey Two-Face was the first one I thought of. He seems to be going in that direction where he's going to start making decisions on a whim. The other one that I just thought of today is Anton from No Country for Old Men, which is creepy because he really creeped the fuck out of me. So Lance is doing his job as an antagonist and Josh Hamilton is just freaking nailing this complexity and nuances of Lance that are so much cooler than the comics, I think, anyway. That's my thoughts. Looking forward to part C. This is where, okay, undoubtedly, Lance is my favorite thirst trap in this season. <laughs> he is. Like, okay, there's there's Ian Anthony Dale who plays Tomichi uh, Okumura, and there's uh, Michael James Shaw who plays Mercer. But then there's Josh Hamilton who plays Lance. The villain, uh, arguably, uh, probably, most likely. Fuck. Because <laughs> I was hoping that he wouldn't be like a bad guy. Like, usually The Walking Dead, like, the bad guys are kind of, eh, but, you know, if you saw it a different way, bah, 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 they're kind of gray. Eh. What do you guys think is happening here? Because, and I, I mentioned this in the beginning, this episode makes the Lance character even less understood. Kind of like the way what happens at the end to Leah, it kind of makes the Reapers as a whole arc or villain type mean nothing. Lance turning out the way he does or saying, now we take it all, which is kind of like denoting, okay, now we're in this imperialist phase because now we want to make the Commonwealth look like the United States. Like, kind of like we were saying in the last episode with the little politics and, the, and we said it a couple episodes before, like, oh, okay, imperialism, bad, colonialism, bad. But it's kind of more annoying. Like where Linda is seeing like an exciting, nuanced descent into evil, I'm kind of like, con- I'm just more confused. We saw this kind of amiable, like, okay, I understand why he might want to do this. And we've even said Lance is the one thing keeping this Commonwealth up where Pamela's system is not working. So where does my sympathy grow go if he's coming after our characters? Where does the nuance go? Where do all the things that we discovered about him actually keeping this fucking thing up? Where does all those where do all those feelings go if they're being clouded by the fact that they're trying to kill our people? Actually, how did you feel about Lance from the start, and how do you feel about him throughout? And that, oh, and by well, now? I believe we've referred to him as a weasel, mm-hmm. a snake. Has that changed no. throughout the episodes? No, no. For you, I'm there saying. was that one. There was that one episode where I felt like maybe he was okay, and I love to hate him because he is a great character. He's very interesting, and he feels really dynamic. But I, do you still feel that way after this episode. Yeah, I okay. Yeah, I still hate him. <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole dynamic yeah, and interesting still, and nuanced. I think he's still interesting. So here's where I land on it. Like, I'm, I'm not. That's the thing. So, okay, go ahead. so he obviously likes to have control over things, right? Very clearly. Mm-hmm. And he's often 
the smartest person in the room, at least previous to like what we've seen that he's even been if able, nobody else knows it. Yes, that he's been able to like manipulate situations to make it work out for him. Now, I think this meeting our group, I think you thought they were going to be another group of big <laughs> walking <Hick>. dum dums. <laughs> and I think what ended up happening is he's gotten so beyond angry about that, like so irritated just at like the basis of that. He's just snapped. I mean, you saw him in one of those last before the before they go to Oceanside. But when his face is cut and he comes out and he just looks like wild eyed and crazy. And we've seen him like that before when he was shooting those walkers because he was pissed. Mm, it's like he's okay. always come like kind of to the like right to the brink, like something's not all because who would be all there in the apocalypse? Right. I mean, realistically. So, so OK, I, I, I see what you're saying. So in a way, he's having his. His The Walking Dead makes you the person you were meant to be moment, maybe, for the first time after being trapped behind walls. I think this is like serious mental health issues. Think of sociopaths, serial killers, you know, psychopaths, right? What are they really great at doing? They're really great at hiding how they are. They are, right. Or the fact that they don't have feelings, be a pop bork. I am a robot. Maybe he's right on the edge of this, whatever the side project is, right? Right at the edge of having this completed or done. And now this is just spiraling out of control. And coming from someone who had anxiety attacks before we went to the we went to the convention because everything kind of crashed down on me at one time, I can understand that he, he's just losing control of this thing. And he and it's, you know, he's just lashing out. You know what? I'm I'm starting to put the pieces together. And I'm actually a little bit a little bit mad because you need a show like ours to put the pieces together. If Bridget is right and he's this is how he is when things this, get crunch time or whatever, maybe he was the one that instigated the whole apocalypse. Because that's I'm still leaning into that. Theory. The Primrose connection that you right. mentioned. Maybe he is right, the one. He's already. like, shit wasn't going his way. And he's like, well, fuck this. I'm just gonna fuck everything. Clear the field. Ah. So I mean we're That'd seeing that kind of tendency. Here's something I said to Rachel, too. Wouldn't it be poetic if they ended the show with the big bad who was the one who started it all? The whole zombie apocalypse. There is something to that. But here's the thing. It's worth nothing if getting there sucks. Yeah, I, mean, I understand. Right? I understand. Right? It's like Daenerys, <laughs> Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. whatever. Anyway. Okay, Bridget, before you so abruptly left without saying <laughs> a word except for in the chat. I'm sorry. I was going to say something so profound. And now I don't want to say anymore. I'm, I'm kidding. Of course I'm going to say it. <laughs> yes, you do. Dead. Don't yeah. lie. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. And, and maybe we can all agree to this because it actually kind of makes this part of the season make a little bit more sense. What if the project that Lance was talking about the entire time on the side that he needs guns for, the destruction of these other colonies, these hick towns, these hick communities... All along. And all that the stealing of the guns that Leah did was getting in the way of all that. That's all it was. He didn't have to say that thing on the side over there. Motherfucker could have just said it so that we could understand what the whole point of the fucking project was. So that we can mm -hmm. care about it. And we care that somebody's meddling and getting in the way. You know what I mean? Like, oh, your plans just don't seem to work out to kill our people. Because Leah got in the way. And then it makes us kind of like feel like, okay... But then he finally gets what he wants. You know, Hilltop is gone. It's been destroyed because they they care more about the people than the place. Alexandria is jumping ship. We don't know what the fate of those people that were left behind. And then we actually see that the, that they have Oceanside people in captivity, which I like the fact that there are some men amongst them, too, which shows that they've grown as a as a community to accept men in their community. Yeah. And they were ditched by everyone else because everyone else knew what was happening. And Oceanside was left to defend, like just <laughs> defend for themselves. Which no is what, what I was saying. What, what, uh, what I was, what was I saying? Oh, you want to hold out for Maggie Ree? Just fucking join the Commonwealth, you dumb fucks. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you wouldn't have to deal with this shit at the end. Maggie ain't gonna save you. <laughs> How crazy would it be though if they were all gunned down? Oh, I like that was what were. I thought. I'm like, holy shit, he's gonna execute all of them. Like yeah. the men were, you know, at the beginning of their whole story by the saviors. Well, after accepting men into their communities and into their ranks, and now they're lined up against the women, and now there's no exceptions. 
with the ocean siders all over again, except now they're all not when men and women are going to die. But which, which, okay, again, 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 knowing that this side project that Lance was talking about with Carlson, that Leah hijacks, that it was all about clearing these communities all along because they failed, right? Because Lance gets rejected by Maggie. And this whole project was to, was to make up for that mistake. His ambition always gets him carried away, right? Doesn't that make more sense when you articulate that project in that manner, the caravan of guns? Doesn't that make everything that's happened this season make a little bit more sense? I mean, everything doesn't have to be cryptic. For cryptic sake. I mean, all I can say in their defense is maybe we're going to get some big, huge explanation in the in the next, and they wanted to keep it a secret till then. But here, this is something I was complaining to Here's Rachel three words about. for you. Pope marked you. <laughs> Pope marked you. Isn't that like one word? Well, Pope marked you. now you're just being offensive. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but that my point is that like we never really I mean, she articulated it in this episode a little bit like, oh, it was I could have walked away. And maybe that's why Pope went after me and to decided to decimate mm. me. But at the same time, so there's an answer. I like that answer. But until and even then, for most people, that's going to fall flat. Right. People are like, oh, is that the answer? Oh, is that the answer? But even then, you, it, be, the fact that you don't accept that as the answer is already bad. I was saying, Rachel, I was complaining to Rachel that I was like, is the way they've done this season, if they were this rush and crushed that they can't ex- explain or at least articulate what's going on, then why didn't they just make another half a season and make a season 12 instead of doing, <laughs> instead of, you know, instead of doing 11C, why didn't they just make a 12th season and add eight more episodes so they had time to flesh everything out adequately? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you think that like having as much time as they did to do that and they did, they had so much time after the bonus episodes Mm -hmm. to flesh out season, the whole of season 11. Let me just tell you something about my personality before we continue. In my waking life, sometimes I need to vent in order to come because my venting and I think this is like the same with you, Sharon D. Sometimes you just need to get it out so you can come back and say, look, I don't really feel that way. I just need to get this out of me. Because half, half of the time, it's me not really being serious. And half the time, it's me just being like, yeah, I am frustrated, but I'm I'm extra for TV or something like that. But for me, it's kind of like, you know, you see you love something or someone and you know they could do better than this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like you're, you're the overachieving parent. You're like, come on, where's that A plus? <laughs> like the show, the episode is still an A or I don't know. Let me just be true to my feelings in the moment. It's still like a B minus, you know? <laughs> But which is not bad, right? It's passing. It's it's pretty good. It's, you know, you can't win them all. We we found the episode where Dave loses his shit. Really, like most episodes, Fear the Walking Dead changes. I I was jarred by the changes in Fear the Walking Dead. I was, but I found a way to see what they were trying to do. This episode was just kind of like, what happened? What ha- guys? What happened here? Do you need two episodes to kind of fix everything? You know, fix everything that is there going to be like an episode you're going to throw on the web only to kind of backtrack what what happened here is there an extended episode somewhere with bubble pop-ups to explain what happened here because you couldn't do it in the episode i'm yeah, sorry they're Angela bringing Kay. back um vh1 pop-up video they had that for a little while though <laughs> but do you for, remember for the on amc oh they included God. the little pop-ups with factoids yeah. and easter eggs during the watch yeah i meant every word of my rant about june and morgan <laughs> <laughs> I meant every word about you being Morgan. <laughs> of course I don't. I, a little bit. A little bit. Of course not. I would never stoop so, even if it's true, I would never stoop so low. <laughs> I did get him in the fucking personality quiz, the Fear of the Walking Dead quiz, so whatever. <laughs> so whatever, we all lose. <laughs> okay, so speaking of losing and Lance losing his mind, so let's let's talk about Lance. So. It, it, just to maybe even close the book on his personality and what he's turning into. Are you looking forward to this? Is is this is it confusing? Do you feel the same way as I do about the about Lance as a character? Like, why include this beginning part where he was like, ah, uh, the cheering Mercer on and Lance, thinking it was him for a hot sec? Why? Well, why show his, us this? That's his Commonwealth persona, his Commonwealth on in front of everybody persona. We're seeing the real lose his shit, be crazy, Lance. What he was meant to be, right. We're seeing the real Lance out in the outside. Remember he told Carol he was better in the outside? That's why, because he's fucking nutty. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and and you have to look at 
all this all this build up, right? This is isn't this the reason why everybody thinks he's so interesting? Why, as Aiden said, he's like one of the most talked about characters in, in this our season? blogs, essentially. Yeah. Like, don't you think that's why? Aiden because of all blogs. of this. If if there was no development, if he had just come out and all of a sudden he was crazy, you'd be like, who is this guy? And oh, great. Another one. <laughs> and like, who's this? <laughs> who's, who's this? this? <laughs> he's been 16 is this his 17th different somebody you know okay i can accept that it's just i kind of just take a person you are who you are here as you are there but then you know maybe maybe there's something to that like his ambition is making him mad and he's still in commonwealth brain mode but he's out there now commonwealth brain out there no worky work maybe is that is that maybe where we go what we're going with because like you, you have to understand, like he 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 rose from the ranks in a world in which he had everything against him, and he used his ambition to kind of get what he needed. Kind of similar to Carol moving up in the ranks really quickly in the Commonwealth, knowing exactly whose bread needed to be buttered to get what she wanted. That's Lance. That's his story told through Carol. But that don't work out there. You're a different person. And what does that look like? What does it look like to be the kind of person you need to be with all that ambition out in the real world? It looks kind of like what people have been saying. The governor, maybe. You're all wacky pants, <laughs> but I, you have, but you feel the, what I'm feeling. Like it's just weird and jarring to see that just like a, like a switch. That's how I feel. Like, I feel like you would see more of a gradual, even in the Commonwealth, you see a gradual bit of that, but you don't, you see like a worried Lance twirling his, his coin. He's not like a Lance, like willing to shoot somebody in the head. And even the, even like the soliloquy he has, or like his little dialogue between he and Eugene, that was what I thought we'd see more of. Oh, we're trying was, to save but you. But that was in the Commonwealth. Right. Out, right. I mean, outside of the gates, he's, I think, I think the stress and the strain has just broken he's, him. He's broken snapped. Him. Yeah. Okay. I'll accept it if we see more of that shit. <laughs> like, I, cause I'll get used to it. That's, and that's I a mean, problem. I'm pretty sure that getting shot in the face is not going to make him any less crazy. Mm, it might be the thing. Well, it's like the it is like the governor is like Michonne putting glass in his eye or something like mm. that. So Aiden to kind of list his points about like these hick people or hick communities being actually useful. Abe, Abe Abraham Ford led the construction crew. Maggie became Deanna's assistant. Rick and Michonne constables or constables. Uh, Sasha the guard was he the nurse with Pete? Uh, he has no idea what these hick hicks are capable of. Hicks in quotes. That's true. But like now we're not sure what. Uh, Lance is capable of, and that's a little scary. There's no knowing because he's so he, nutso. He's pulling the uh, <laughs> the uh, Saul Goodman. You have no idea what I'm capable of. <laughs> ah, more parallels, mm. you know. So that Aiden brings up this Pamela storyline is always uh, is also reminding me of the, of Negan's in a way. Well, how so? Because I, I want to go to Pamela next, actually. So Max, I think, in an effort to kind of humanize Pamela to gauge her involvement right now. I feel like she was trying to see how far Pamela's influence goes. Like, is she a part of this? Is she not a part of this? I feel like the result of that conversation is her seeing, oh, she's definitely not part of this, but she's definitely part of the, she's definitely not part of the solution. You're talking about Max asking Pamela yeah, about Pamela. the scholarship? Yeah, about the fi the telling, by the way, $50,000 figure, which okay. is about the amount of people in the Commonwealth. So my feeling like, on that? was that Pamela was genuinely concerned about Max and was asking her, like, you know, how are you doing? Like, if we can't tell each other, like, who can we tell? Like, you know, if we're going through something. And you see Max pauses and looks down, almost like out of regret. Like, I don't want to go behind her back. She cares about me. I care about her. We've worked together closely. Then it's almost like she's like, well, here, here's how I'll know. Here's how I'll know. If she's really going to make the changes that need to happen or if she's just going to be a part of the problem. Right. And right. then she asks her, what would you like? You know, I have an idea for it. I really would want to do a scholarship for less fortunate kids. And she's like, oh, no, no, that money has to go back into that fund. And so the fact that she didn't even really want to hear it. She's like, yeah, thanks for your out of box thinking. Like. Like very diplomatic. It, it was very well. It was really condescending. Like yeah. I thought, I would if if my boss had said that to me, I'd be like, "Good for you." Well, yeah, um. that's a very well. What I mean is, it's a very diplomatic way of saying, "No, I don't want to." Yeah. So that to me was that was like Max testing her. I thought. Yeah. I yeah. even wondered, is there even fifty thousand dollars? 
to do that or has she made up this whole scenario? Giving her a chance to do the right thing. Yeah. But for a hot, for a hot sec, I almost thought it was real and they found Sebastian's money and they gave it all to, you know what I mean? Which is, mm. explains a little bit why he comes in later. Maybe they did. Right. I'm not saying yes or no, but it just, it the thought occurred to me while you were talking like, oh, where is this money? Is it real? Did they find Sebastian's money? Whatever. Sebastian so. was very drunk during that, right? Is that, he was is that what drunk. I was supposed to be getting out of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I but thought. I will, get to, I will get to that because I do want to talk about that. But I, I actually kind of almost felt weird about Pamela. On the one hand, I feel like I'm like more ambivalent than I am like, fuck her, you know? I feel bad for her, almost. We talk about maybe Pamela and her privilege all the time, but we got a glimpse into how smart of a person she is. However, I feel like she is a she has enslaved herself to the system. Now, of course, it doesn't hurt her because she has the rights. She has a lot of privileges and stuff like that. We can all agree to that. I feel like it's also made her not be able to see the problems for what they really are or listen to the plight of people for what they real or like even think for a hot second. Oh, they're just complaining. There's just it works for most. And to her point, yes, it does work for most people, the overwhelming majority of people. However, I see a person who's unwilling to change because of how long the system has worked. I feel like she's forcibly chaining herself to this system. So when Max brings up an out of the box idea, a thing that we can maybe try that might improve things for people, I think she automatically is afraid of that change of what that might mean. What if we can't have this party as fantastically as we have it? What if it changes the system to the point where it collapses? I think it really does keep her up at night. If we deviate from this plan, things might collapse. So she's practicing that speech at the beginning of that scene. And she is yet again talking about how the community was founded and right, how right. and how we're such a shining light and how similar we are to the world we knew before. And, and But it's never about what are we looking forward to? What are we working towards? It's always about look at all of this great stuff we already have done. And there's no fo- there's no forward thinking at all. On her and part. what is that if if not Rick's speech to everybody saying we are the walking dead? We have to be this in order to get to a different place so, for our future. So to me, she's her own worst enemy in this situation, because if yeah. she was willing to change and, and look towards the future and to to make this really work, then she wouldn't be in the situation that she's in now. Well, with the newspaper and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. It's already out of her hands. All of this stuff that's going on in the Commonwealth is actually helping Lance because it's keeping Pamela diverted from wondering where the hell Lance is and what's going on there. All of her attention is on Sebastian and, and the news, you know, now the newspaper and everything. Which is why it's Lance that gave her the list, which is what we said. And I said, yeah, what if they're doing a pincer attack? Which, okay. And again, my complaint about him saying, oh, project off to the side. He's trying to implicate these communities to make them the, the Commonwealth's enemies. You know, he's not only wants to decimate and take them over, because he wants a reason to justify taking over, right? He, his original plan was to like, to like, oh, you're the enemies of the Commonwealth. Your shit's ours now. You guys planned a terrorist attack, you immigrants, whatever. All right, like, what, what a, what a reason to colonize, right? Yo, oh, you are enemies. But might makes right. We take you over. I think it's all part of his plan. Like, implicate Pamela by way of Sebastian. Immigrants are our enemies. Common. So now we keep everybody together, follow, following the status quo. Because whenever there's a war. Everybody seems to drop their political opinions and, and go like, well, I guess we have to support the country. Right. Ignore the stat, you know, ignore the status quo for what it is to fight a common enemy. I, but I do want to go back to something that you had said, Bridget, about what Pamela says. Like, OK, she's seeing Max is seeing a glint of it's not the first time we've seen a glint of sympathy from Pamela. The other one was in front of Tyler Davis. I think she really is sympathetic to Tyler Davis. Could be a political front, whatever it is. But it feels like with Max is. She has no reason to kind of be diplomatic, obviously, because of her answer. So I think she generally does feel concerned for Max on an individual level that she is, she's not, she detects, not in a great place. She says something very interesting. And, and I had said that Zeke was saying this about saying this to Tommy, having his, the same conversation that he was having with Sadiq, he had it with Tommy. So Zeke, Zeke was playing the Sadiq in the scenario and Tommy is the Zeke. I feel like Pamela literally almost said the same words that Sadiq said to Zeke. She says, if we can't show emotion to one another, who can we show it to? I I was like, what? Am I in crazy town? Didn't we just do this? But that's supposed to say something. Like, I feel like there's two sides of Pamela Milton. One that, you know, is a decent human being person. And then the other one is frightened 
terrified, stays up till three in the morning thinking about, but what if I, we deviate for the plan for one second? Well, what, I think is that, is I that think the end of us? I think she's a really good representation of how we all are in our regular lives. We hate change. People don't like change. And, or we're frightened of change more to the point. And so isn't that exactly how most people would be? Like she got to hold on to the way the world was. And so she's afraid to lose that. And she's afraid to lose being at the top of it because this is all oh. she's known since it had, like since this all started. Right, right. The reason why certain people don't relinquish power in certain governments, right? Because like, okay, if I'm gone, who's going to take over? And she's not the best person to be leading. If she's not forward thinking, then she's not the best person to be leading. But now, right, right. now, but right. so you he, can see why she has a hard time giving that up because mm -hmm. it's I, I do simp I do sympathize with that. Yeah, I don't I don't think she's a bad person at all. I think she's she's a victim to the past. Shackle like a remnant, a like creature a creature of habit. Yeah. But like like the Reapers. Old they just couldn't let go. Hard. Yeah. You know, I want to I want to go back to to Aiden because I kind of wanted to give him a little time to talk about why Pamela's story reminds him about Negan and the Saviors. But he says at the end everyone turned on Negan, even if they weren't doing it together. Simon trying to kill him, Dwight going behind his back, Eugene exploding the guns. Now Lance is creating an army and taking over the communities as colonies of the Commonwealth. Max is helping publish the article. Mercer's now, okay, now they're turning on Pam. Max is helping publish the article. Mercer is starting to take out their guards. <laughs> Even Sebastian is disgruntled with her. Yeah. At the end, they have no, they have no one. Everyone hates them. Pamela, Negan. Even if they are working separately to take them down. Yeah. It does make me feel bad for both of them. They once had the world, but when the people see it, they, they're, they're always the only way they go against it. This, this is something that we had also said that like, it's not so simple to say, oh, because we have this inclination to expose the truth. And, and, and Mer but Mercer says it best in the last episode in trust. He says, yeah, but what happens after that? What happens to these communities after you expose, after you drop a bombshell, do they have faith in government anymore? The Miltons, what we've achieved, do they have gratitude? They, do they appreciate the fact that they've been saved for, for 10 years and now they have nothing to trust anymore. So what they start revolting, start taking things, start taking matters to their own hands, law and order breaks down, communities start to fall. That's, it's not so easy. Aiden continues. It also shows the differences between her and Deanna, though. Deanna was constantly writing those plans. She had never written Dolor, his TB, Proderit Slim. I don't remember what it stands for, but it was it was something her and... To remind um, yourself that it would be worth it. Yeah, her and Reggie always talked about that. Right, okay. Someday this pain will be useful for you. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Latin proverb meaning someday this pain will be useful to you. Okay. Useful for you. Okay. Right. And so Aiden asks, by the time the series ends, who should be the leader of the Commonwealth? Well, doesn't that look a lot more like a parliamentary system? You have a system of parties, the conservative Commonwealth Party, the progressive survivors party, the Oceanside contingent, who are may, might die a lot in the next episode or three, if depending on how pornographic Lance wants to make it. I don't know. I'm not I'm not playing that game. In her mind, I think she feels like things like this big celebration are what the community needs. And like, and honestly, she really believes that this is They're what the people want. They right. want her to put all this money into this day for celebration. I mean, I think she's a, just a distinct parallel to today's politicians who think throwing something pretty makes everything else not matter. That'll Seem make, less them, or that'll less make them happy and, and we'll just keep on keeping on the way we are. I don't think right. she's necessarily evil. I think she's just oblivious. Right. She thinks that she may think that this is enough. Yeah. I think she's just you know? oblivious. One of the things that may, was made a little bit more clear, though, it was the most innocuous of hints of maybe a clue into Pamela's character. On top of the fact of her reverence of what her father, the system her father, which I think we can establish, he created that allowed the Commonwealth to make it far. So her father was actually president. The coin that, that Lance keeps flipping is of her father, on the coin, 1982. Yeah, yeah, get this shit. I don't know about the years, I don't know what it means, but I got to actually see both sides of the coin as it was being flipped. President William Milton, 1982, is on the front, and it shows a picture of the same man whom we see depicted in the portrait of her father. On the back, there is a buffalo, like an American buffalo. It says United States of America on the, on the top, and then on the bottom in Latin, it says, and I thought this is very fucking tongue-in-cheek, tongue, tongue -in -cheek, Pedestri mortus est, which means the literally 
It it does, but it's it's not it's not quite right. Okay, so it literally means pedestrian is dead because mm-hmm. the the Walking Dead in Latin is actually mortus ambulatio. <laughs> That's what it actually means. But it's just such a tongue in cheek. What mm-hmm. the fuck? Kind of like okay, literally walker is dead or the walker is dead so it's the walking dead okay why would a president have that on his back i tried to think of any like because the miltons are in on it and that ties in so that it was an open secret that ties into the um paperwork that they found in um the world beyond with all the funky dates on it the The 2001 um, documents project votus yeah Okay. Well, I mean, maybe on, this is just another another piece of the time. puzzle. Been yeah. Gone for a long yeah. Time. Motherfucking I told people. You the Mil- with I it. told you the Miltons were involved. That's why they were in Toledo. I wonder. I wonder if all these little nuggets are going to ever lead to anything. Because I don't. I I'm hoping that AMC gives us the time to actually. Oh, 2001 Project Photos. 1973 Munich Massacre for Padre. This 1982 uh, President William Milton. Uh, and he opens. In plain sight, The Walking Dead in Latin, the back of my coin. Motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, we didn't know what it meant. We thought it was like a commentary on the common man. Well, we're the wall. We need to. It's like, you know, you can be part of the solution, right? The self is dead. The walker is dead, right? But the runner, he lives. Oh, so apparently. OK, so our, our, our investigatory group brings in Zeke to this equation. And that's when I start getting a little bit worried. Okay, because Zeke is already starting to... Oh, you fucking asshole. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you missed... Dave, you missed it earlier when I went to the bed... When I went to the bathroom, he's like, Sorry, Bridget had to leave so I could interview her. Interview <laughs> <laughs> Man, this... Well, at least you're funny about it. I was very busy stealing one of your co-hosts. Speaking of, I'll be interviewing Jasmine during your next recording. Bridget, you ready for our next interview? Yeah, just go ahead. I'm going to borrow Bridget right now. What... What do you think Elisa's? Why do you think Elisa isn't here every day of the week? Every our last three recordings. I think Lance is a pussy version of Simon. Oh, really, Elisa? Will that cancel us? No, nobody's listening. And it's your fault. It's your fault. Nobody's listening. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not as crazed and lunatic as you guys are. Oh, you guys are all level-headed today. Wait until. Wait until June and Morgan get on the screen. Oh, now I'm not the crazy one. You, well, you think I was ranting about Leah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Our own union of do-gooders seems to rope in Zeke. And that's when I start getting a little concerned. Do, do you guys share the same concerns that I do? Because if it, if that's true, my original prediction that I had with Elisa, what was the episode? It was the same episode with Negan Ma- tells Maggie I would have killed all of you. Because it, it was only me and Elisa on that episode. And I said, you know, it might be Zeke that gets the Dwight death. And this mm-hmm. might point to more evidence of him getting more involved on a more active level of the revolution. Well, which yes. he is. He has a right whole before network. Magna goes, right, they're, Magna ready goes, to, they're ready to ride at dawn, Dave. <laughs> right. Like Paul Revere, Max. Max Revere. <laughs> what, what do you think of all this so far? I, I'm, I'm a little um, like, uh, this is a bit too much, you know? <laughs> Rachel and I, I Rachel posted that thing the other day about who do you think will get Dwight's death and Rick's death. Mm. And I was thinking, like, because I, I didn't read the comics, right? But I have, like, a basic stuff with stuff I picked up from you guys. So Dwight is against Pamela, right? I mean, like, he's basically trying to bring down the, the Commonwealth. Yeah, so like what the system if, must collapse. What if the Dwight is Eugene? Because That's I can see what him. what I came to eventually, yeah. I can see him taking Emma out trying to protect Max so in that case because mm. Rick dies in the comics trying to protect Dwight a little bit or something like that right am I right no he kind of dies in his sleep because I think was it Sebastian, Sebastian ends up, kills him um, yeah in bed I, I'm thinking maybe it's Rosita that gets Rick's oh uh, yeah like so who would benefit from saying we are not cause he, we originally thought okay maybe it might be Daryl but like now that Daryl's like on the outs because Daryl seemed to have been defending the Commonwealth. You know, this is, hey, it's not bad, but at least my my kids, my kids get, get a decent life. You know, I become a trooper. It's all for them, whatever. But now that he's on the outs, oh, my God, and who takes care of RJ and Judith now? Rosita. Rosita? Oh, poor, poor woman. I wonder, though, if Daryl isn't going to be at the end of this, like, we could have had a really good thing. And Maggie, you being stubborn and refusing to let this go ruined it for all of us 
So basically what Sharon D said earlier in the episode where she said, like, oh, I'm a little resentful that I had to kill my girlfriend like, and you ruined our Commonwealth What if it life. ends up leading to Daryl being like, well, I'm going to go back to the Commonwealth because this is what I want. I'm going to fight to keep it. So then he does get the Rick's death that he so deserved, or will he? But, and, but that's negating the possibility of a spinoff. I've said what I've said about these spinoffs. Well, I mean, I've it, said what I've said. It, could, it could really be the Daryl with the Walker Daryl in the spinoff. Just, just leaving him riding his dead corpse. <laughs> right. The whole he's got the motorcycle. Series. He's got him in the sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> They're just paying Norman Reedus to just be a walker. Walker like. for the entire series. But then maybe have some flashbacks, right? Or, or oh, this could be even better. Wait, wait, wait. Carol is so fucking crazy. Walker Daryl starts talking to her. Series validated. Oh, we just right? have a we have a Can whole series watch watching that? a... Just a whole series of watching Daryl deteriorate. Right. But still talk kind of like a Santa Clarita diet, right? Yes. Like one, one dude. His nose can just fall off. Keep fu- oh, oh. That was unexpected. Hey, stop fucking me. I'm gross. That, that head was Nathan Fillion, by the way. Yeah, was, was at first. Mm-hmm. Then they changed the guy out. Great. Though. Why couldn't he just stick around for the rest of the voice? Come on, man. Bring back Follow Firefly. Through. Daryl picked up the radio and said, he ain't here anymore. And that was like a callback to the, the Gabe thing, mm-hmm. which I thought oh, was pretty Oh, call awesome. me Gabriel. Yeah, I thought that was free. Okay. No Jensen here. Like, it was like the no same Jensen thing. I really here. liked that. Let's go to Daryl in the cabin. That's a very interesting sequence that happens near the end where Daryl shoots out, shoots at Lance, probably thinking he might hit him, probably thinking he might kill him, whatever. And then the soldiers might blame it on Leah because is what it looked like. Is that what they were hoping would happen? Is that what Daryl was hoping would happen? He hits Lance, takes out the threat. He escapes from the back. What What is the hope? Because he shoots at them, then he shoots at the other window, and then proceeds to go out the other window. What What is the hope here? I think he was just hoping to hit, kill Lance, and the soldiers would be like, whatever. Maybe Why does he shoot the being, other window? Him being, a com- him, being, him being a Commonwealth soldier... He would know um, maybe he would feel like, well, if if Lance is gone, then these soldiers are just going to be like, fuck it. You know, we're we're not we're just going to go back to the Commonwealth. Right. Tell him what happened. Yeah. Or something I mean, like that. maybe shot out the other window because he saw a soldier out there. Maybe, maybe it just felt kind of deliberate. You know what I mean? Like did that did it not feel deliberate. Like, OK, I have to make it look like Leah was shooting everywhere and she's a crazy person. I was trying to figure out exactly what he was trying to do, because it felt like he was trying to lay uh, Leah shooting uh, Lance in the face rather than him because obviously they don't see him they don't see that it was him in the cabin saving Maggie but they still right? figured but, it and, out immediately because he they they went to look out the window that they'd escaped out of like mm. it, I don't think it fooled Lance at all wait 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 but he might he might be giving at least the impression that okay Maggie got away well, from you but why the, would, and that Daryl had nothing to do with why it why would why would Leah be firing at him though I mean that's what if if they still have a deal mm. why would Leah be fire why would he even think that Leah would fire at him well, maybe to kind of make him question his choice of, of choosing Lee in the first place. This is why I'm saying like that. It, it wasn't that last sequence just before Daryl and Maggie go away. Wasn't that a little odd? You don't feel that was a little odd? Like, what were they exactly trying to do here? What was Daryl's plan here? What I was don't he think thinking? he had a plan. I think he was just shooting, trying to shoot. Oh, there's Lance. Let me shoot him and end this right now. And then when he didn't kill him, he was like, well, let's just fucking get out of here. I felt like maybe he, he was trying to pin like a firefight that happened between he and between Maggie and at least Leah and then in the process shoots Lance and then the soldiers maybe were the ones to kill Leah you know like oh in the firefight something like that do you think so, Leah I don't know. left that bloody rag in the tree on purpose to show Lance where she was yeah I do think that I don't feel like he would feel that she would be shooting at him in any way I feel like I don't think that at all I mm. think I think mm. he would he would think it was Daryl or Maggie. Mm. We're pretty sharp knives in the drawer. We don't get everything right, but I feel like we we do a pretty good job of analyzing this stuff. And even that, the fact that this is just so up in the air, like just just an odd sequence, motion sequence from Daryl. Like to, I just didn't understand it. A hundred. I didn't understand it a hundred percent. Everything is supposed to have like some sort of like. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, that he did that. That he did that. I mean, I, don't know. I feel I felt this entire. So I said it was like, like a little off. Like the the showrunners are just in a hurry to get this shit over with and move on to their next projects. There's not nearly as much thought and 
continuity and stuff as they usually do. And well, for me, it was just this episode and, la- and a little bit of last episode, at least if with respect to Lance. But this episode was just all wasn't per- it wasn't perfect. Let's put it that way. It's just it bothered me. Well, now that Lance has all these communities, what does it all mean? For, first of all, it, Pamela's on the outs because she's in trouble with the people. So maybe that will make her, oh, well, okay, maybe that will make her more inclined to take Lance's plan on or whatever Lance wants to do. Now she needs anything to gain favor with the people back, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And now that he has all the communities, he has all the buildings, at least with Hilltop, when as it pertains to Hilltop, and he has some of the people that were left behind in Alexandria, and he has all of Oceanside. And then where's Virgil and where's Luke? There's also that factor too. Virgil was in Alexandria when we last left him. Luke in Oceanside with Jules. I guess that means Pamela has to start trying new things in order to stay in power, which might ultimately mean a reversal between what Pamela does and what Lance does. Lance can operate invisibility, whereas Pamela has to operate from the shadows, maybe. Maybe even with our group, double dealing with Lance and, and whatever else she feels she has to do to maintain some sort of semblance in government. I, 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 I'm not saying that I feel for a foreboding like what you're feeling, Sharon D. I guess everybody could have a stinker of an episode. I'm just surprised mine came in so far into the series. <laughs> I, I, I've never hated any episode. Even Diverged had meaning. It felt a little bit off, but it didn't feel like this off. Some of the scenes just didn't make sense. The random snake, the way Lance's character ended up. Just feel like, oh, we're doing this again? The uh, crazy guy snaps, <laughs> finally. They're putting us in a space where I don't know what's going to happen next, but whatever happens next, it better be good. <laughs> but. At least they left us at a point where things are kind of really, really, really up in the air. You really don't know what's going to happen next. You think you know what's going to happen, but you really don't. You expect it to be a certain way, but I guarantee you it is not. The fact that Daryl is on the outs is not what I expected, so kudos to them on that. I thought Daryl was going to be a true believer, kind of like in it to win it, take whatever they got because that's the best solution forward. We started in this, at least in this trimester, in one direction. like. This is how it's got to be because this is the end game. And now at least the series has got me to the point where I'm not sure that that's the way this is going to end up and that it may not even resemble the comic book ending at all. You know, C- CRM aside, CRM completely to the side. That makes me hopeful. But what do you guys think? This may be a good place to leave off on. I am eternally hopeful. <laughs> so... No matter what anybody says about any of these shows, I am still happy to just watch them and give them my money and like, and maybe I'm a big idiot for doing that. But because, you know, I I think back to um, this first half of season seven of Fear the Walking Dead and online, there were a lot of complaints about a lot of episodes and I always found the silver lining in, in everything. And so even though this episode didn't go the way that I expected it to or the way that I wanted it to, isn't that better than me just watching something that I just know the ending to? Isn't this better that I just that I'm watching something that is like giving me pause and making me think and, you know, I'm having to like analyze it and try to come up with why things are the way that they are. Like there's your silver lining. And I'm hopeful for what's to come, be it a spinoff, be it no spinoff, be it my favorite character dies. I don't I don't know. Like whatever's whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But I'm I'm here for it. I'm I'm excited. What about you, Sharon? The way this this episode leaves off. What is it? Where do you, how do you feel about that? Given everything we've said well, throughout this episode breakdown, like Ted Lasso said and a character who I can't remember now, it's the hope that kills you or believe. <laughs> or believe he puts up the sign of believe mm-hmm. on the mm-hmm. screen so everybody can believe and start hitting it with their hands because you must believe but it's the believe hope. it's the hope that kills you but you know what and yet you i smile the... sharon <laughs> yeah and what was the lesson from that episode yeah the, it, you know you may lose a few but don't give up on us just mm. yet and what ends up happening in the series they end up coming up on top at least for the most part mm-hmm. they, they didn't become redundant that's right. Believe, Sharon D. Believe. It's just hey, one stinker of an episode. Hey, I am 100% here for anything, even though I'm still mad about Leah. That, yeah. I'm even be though salty about that for a while. I want I want a haunting of Daryl, of Leah's ghost. Oh, I'd be That's, down for that. I right? wanted him to go You know what it is, Daryl? All of Lori Grimes. Gavin. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Gavin. God. To Morgan. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, Daryl, just you know, you know what it is. Floating in a white dress. <laughs> no, none of that shit. Like, this is Sharon's worst nightmare from the last episode breakdown. 
Rick, why are you going crazy? But you're supposed to be the hero. I just, I was, you, I was you laughing at the image of Leah behind Daryl. Ooh, like <laughs> now we're thinking like Beetlejuice, right? Like, woo, what the fuck are you doing? I can't even see you. Anyway, whatever. Leah saw. Nobody Leah can saw. see you. Leah saw. I can't believe you cut holes in my three thousand dollars sheets. Dollar sheets. <laughs> She's sleeping with Prince Valium tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Leah is, at least. Instead of Prince <laughs> Filthy. <laughs> Prince needs a shower. Anyway, if you like what you heard, head over to ratethispodcast.com slash squawking dead until we get a new thing. <laughs> Five stars in the neck plan is all we need to know that you love us. But please use it as a sounding board to rate us on any of the platforms available to you on that platform tell us what you liked tell us what you didn't like but tell us after every episode because it really really does make a difference your ratings help drive traffic towards our podcast because we need a little bit more traffic it could be the you sharing these podcasts on social media it could you be be you talking to a colleague about this podcast that you're afraid of telling people because you don't want people to judge you you watch the walking dead be proud of it and be proud that you're listening to us while doing it because we're the best Walking Dead Universe podcast, if only you would tell other people about it. <laughs> but listen, if you really like what we're doing, jokes aside, and you really want to be part of this journey, like let's say this this podcast isn't as popular as it should be, but you still like it enough to kind of, you want you like it at that intimate stage where it's just a few of us, you know, so it's just us together. You want to get intimate with Squawking Dead, head over to ko-fi.com slash squawking dead and just follow us. And when you feel like jumping in with a tip to get 30 days of support about content to our support back content <laughs> <laughs> or joining a membership tier for as little as a dollar a month to get that content perpetually you can jump in whenever you feel like and feel confident knowing that you are sending us a signal that what we do here matters because it's not about the money obviously it's really about telling us we're doing the right thing so with that everybody i've been your host david cameo and i was joined by sharon dk blazy gardner and survivors tier members jasmine.iec who was here earlier and of course of course bridget x prophecy girl on twitter and ain't my first rodeo on instagram it's obviously chad l coleman chad coleman he heard this what you're up to (laughs) let me follow that girl (laughs) this one's for you chad take care everybody (laughs) i can't wait to see you on uh the orville season three i think it is right yeah come on man i miss you i miss you buddy anyway I, I, that, by the way, great. I, Sharon, you would love that show. I've it is it is actually, it. It's really oh. good. I was surprised. You, I was it surprised. It is really good yeah. for the for uh, sorry, the walking for Star Trek: The Next Generation lovers. Mm-hmm. It's really a good callback. For a, like for like a satire too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On top of that, it's like it's and it's also like it's not like a shit posting kind of humor. It's kind of like it, a little bit of that, but like there, it's very lighthearted. Yeah, it has heart to it, which I didn't expect. It's made by genuine fans. We're big Seth McFarlane fans. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. We closed out the season. It wasn't as much as good as we hoped it would be, but we're looking very forward to the future, and we will be taking this series down, and we'll be looking to future episodes to come. See you very soon for our coverage of Fear the Walking Dead, and stay tuned for more Fandemic content. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this episode, the where we discussed the 16th episode of The Walking Dead's 11th and final season, titled Acts of God. I was joined by, I'm your host, David Cameo, and I was joined by Sharon D, a.k.a. Blazy Gardner, and Survivors Tier members Bridget, ex-Prophecy Girl on Twitter, and Jasmine, at jasmine.iec on Instagram. Now, those two are Survivors Tier members. Now, that's the highest tier that we have, and they are in... And when you join the survivors tier, you are entitled to join us in our episode breakdowns, but you don't even have to do that. Uh, there are limited slots avail- available for you to join us on stream or in the recordings, but you don't have to join that tier to get behind the scenes info on what we do here at Squawking Dead. And if you, I mean, if you're so inclined, you could just follow us there for free. So you just know when we record, when we drop our unedited episode recordings, uh, when we're done recording. Uh, a whole bunch of behind the scenes things like even 
for join if you join for a dollar a month at the Walkers tier, you will instantly have access to our Discord where you can have behind the scenes conversations, weigh in on certain things regarding the podcast, lend us your input in episode discussions. So, whatever your comfort level, just remember to follow first, and the rest will follow when you feel like it. Well. It's time to thank our survivors to your members first because that's part of the perk of the job, you know, for su- for supporting us. And those would be, let's mention them again, at jasmine.iac on Instagram. That's it. Ed, and uh, X Prophecy Girl on Twitter, Bridget, as well as at Ain't This Rodeo, Ain't My First Rodeo on Instagram. And of course, at, at Real Ryan GM on Twitter, uh, at Aliza Jones 71 on Instagram and of course fanartlindy that's ko-fi.com slash fanartlindy one word uh, but we wouldn't be anything without our whispers tier members too it's our second tier our middle tier and they get just like the survivors tier they get 50% off the merch store uh, as well as the ability to join us in our jackbox games as well as the survivors to your members, of course. Uh, now those would be at J13 Voorhees on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at Sandy.D.Morrison on Facebook, uh, at Frosted Angel 67 on Twitter, at Rita's Fan 2 on Instagram and Twitter, at Tyler Philip Cox on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at Aiden the Raven on Twitter, and of course, at judith.morn on instagram uh we we would be nothing without these people (laughs) without you uh first of all for listening for sharing for rating us uh on on your favorite podcast platform if they have a rating system um but you know the supporters kind of shine a light and light the torch and tell us that what we're doing matters and they want us to succeed and they want us to keep going and uh they kind of they're kind of like the lights on the runway. They they just light the path forward and, you know, tell us, hey, keep going. So if you feel so inclined, just follow us at ko-fi.com slash And uh, when you feel like getting involved, get involved. And if you don't, don't. At least you know what's happening behind the scenes, uh, or at least generally what's happening behind the scenes, uh, because we don't post, it, post this stuff on social media. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash squawking dead. Uh, it just really helps us out essentially. And, uh, I've been your host, David Cameo, and I guess we'll see you. Well, if you only listen for walking dead coverage, I guess we'll see you in fall. But if you're, uh, if you're, if you want to listen to our fear, the walking dead coverage, that's going to be happening very soon as well as hopefully, uh, dead in the water. Uh, the, um, AMC Plus series that they released recently. Uh, we're going to try to see what the deal is with that and how we want to approach that mini series with the return of Riley in a, obviously, series that kind of breaks down how they experienced the fall. So, in any case, I hope to see here. I hope you get to hear us very soon and hope you've enjoyed everything that we've had so far. And we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>